Raising children is such a huge responsibility and it is not for the faint-hearted. Merely looking after someone else's kids can make you lose your mind even when you know they will be returning to their parents after some time. Now imagine being responsible for that child's every single move. They are eating, they are sleeping, they are homework, they are bath, they are extracurricular activities and so on. Let us not even think of the times when the child is ill. The mother is constantly thinking of her kids even when she's out and is supposed to be having a good time. And to top it all, more than half the responsibility of their tarbiyah falls on her shoulders. Allahu Akbar. May Allah reward all the mothers out there. Ameen. Certainly, this is not an easy job. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the maqam of the mother in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Your heaven lies under the feet of your mother. First, Allah has honored us women with the role of managing the affairs of the home. He has elevated our station by making us the primary nurturers of the next generation of Muslims, the Hufath, preservers of the Quran, the revivers of Sunnah, the ambassadors of our faith, Islam, the generation that calls humanity to good and forbid them from the path that leads to destruction, the generation that respect and honor women, the generation that stand with the oppressed against the oppressors, the generation that preserves the call to Tawheed and are steadfast upon worshipping their Lord with sincerity and in awe. We are the nurturers of them all. The Prophet wasallam said, A woman is the guardian of her husband's home and his children and she is responsible for them. And for this we will be questioned. Tarbiyah may feel like such a daunting task and indeed it requires so much hard work and commitment. It requires us to not simply set standards and establish boundaries in our homes and with our children, but to live up to those standards and models, staying within those boundaries. Because our children will see and mimic us. We can tell them lying and taking things without permission is haram, but children, as it is said, listen with their eyes. They can only grow up with the right influence when they are in an environment that enables them to embody the values and characteristics of the righteous, if we strive to be righteous ourselves. And so, if we are at a point where we find ourselves struggling in our roles as nurturers and shepherds to our flocks, the starting point is a mindset shift. And here are a few ways we can successfully do that and more, inshallah. Number one, understand this role we get to fill, hard as it may be, is an honorable one. And Allah gifted us with it. And if he has saddled us with it, then it is because he knows that we have the capacity for it. He subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah does not burden a soul beyond that it can bear. Number two, recognize that we have been given in this role the ability to influence change. We complain many times about the state of the world, the oppression, the injustice, the immorality. What we overlook is that the people responsible for those atrocities were birthed and more often than not raised by women. So what if we made the intention and the deliberate effort to influence the change we hope to see? That begins in our homes, with our children and the ones in our care. Number three, remember the big rewards that come with this difficult task. For every fatiha we teach our children, we will be rewarded every time they recite it until they return to their Lord. And the same applies to every good deed we teach our children. The good manners, the du'as, the prayers and the list is endless. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man dalla ala khayrin falahu mithlu ajri fa'ilu. Whoever points to the good has the reward of the one who performs it. No doubt our righteous children will be a form of sadaqat al-jariyah for us long after we have left this world if we continue striving to give them the proper tarbiyah and this should be the best motivator. Number four, the outcome of all affairs rests with Allah. It is important to recognize that our role is intending to the flock, in shepherding them and guiding them to do what is ideal. The outcome though is for Allah. So let us not be hard on ourselves when our kids don't turn out the way we envisioned after all our efforts. The son of Prophet Noah despite being under the guardianship of a prophet, still went astray. Sufficient for us is the knowledge that Allah is Al-Khabir, the All-Aware, and Al-Basir, the All-Seeing, who sees all that we are doing for his precious sleep. And he is a shakur, the most appreciative, and would reward us all our efforts generously. He subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Surah to Hud, Wasbir fa inna Allah la yudhi'u ajr al-muhsinin. And be patient, 
Verily, Allah loses not the reward of the good doers. Number five, we mustn't ride solo. Tarbiya is a communal affair, so let's seek help when we need it and render help where it is needed. We must nurture our children as we nurture the children around us, our neighbors, relatives in the masjid, at school. We are our sister's keeper. We support each other, help each other, look out for each other. The Prophet wasallam said, The parable of the believer in their affection, mercy, and compassion for each other is that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever. Number six, and lastly, dua over despair. Sometimes, mothers complain that the terbiya they strive to give to their wards is nullified when they go to visit their maternal or paternal relatives. And this might be frequent due to one reason or the other. At times, this might be because we didn't communicate clearly and kindly enough to the caregivers about that which we appreciate so they understand the seriousness of the matter, while other times this happens even after repeatedly reminding the caregivers. At such times, we shouldn't fall into despair, but continuously enlighten our children about that which is right while making lots and lots of du'a for Allah's help. Indeed, our Lord is Al-Majib, the one who answers, and his help is near to those who seek it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all our children and make them much better than we envision. I mean. If you have benefited from this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Dean Sisters, to help us make more videos. You can also get yourself or a loved one a valuable item from our charity shop from bit.ly slash dscharity underscore shop. Jazakumullahu khairan.